Well, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the beach. It is good to be here. It may be eight degrees outside, but it's 80 in here. Kinda. Can I get an amen? Some of you are bundled up in coats and going, no. So it is good to be with you this morning. It is good to give worship and praise with you this morning. It is good to celebrate our children and tell the Christmas story in kind of a different way this morning uh, as we give praise to God. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Amen. So a few announcements before we get to start uh, worship this morning. Uh, If you didn't grab a communion packet on the way in, uh, feel free to kind of sneak back there now during announcements. Uh, I've also got a a time waster. Just know that that is coming. Uh, I need to give our kids enough time to transition uh, into their costumes and kind of get their parts. And then uh, so just know that I will waste about 10 minutes of your time later today. I hope that's okay. Can I get an amen? All right, some of you are like, "Mm, all right, we'll go with it anyway, though. Um, I think that's all that really needs to be lifted up. We've got our Christmas Eve worship service. That's on Saturday at 4 o'clock. So uh, Christmas Eve is Saturday, and then 4 o'clock worship. Come join us as we get to give thanks for the gift of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Uh, And so it'll be a little more... um, Less Hawaiian, I'll let's say, uh, less beach themed, but still a good way to give thanks to God. Uh, Christmas Eve, um, four o'clock. With that said, Sunday morning, Christmas morning, how many of you were planning to show up for Sunday morning worship? That's what we were thinking too. <laughs> So there is no Christmas morning worship, Sunday morning worship. We usually have Sunday morning worship. Uh, Next Sunday we are not. But join us January 1st. Holy Commotion is leading worship for us. Uh, We get to have king cake as a snack. We're going to have some some festivities. Uh, I think we're going to challenge Holy Commotion, have a, a menu of songs to have them sing. Wear your PJs. Wear your PJs. It's gonna, so if you just wanna roll out of bed with bedhead and all, cowlick and all, come give praise January 1st. Uh, and so, you know, take some Tylenol if you need it. <laughs> come to church. Are you with me? All right, good. I'm glad some of you are with me on that. I, I think that is the last announcement that I will say. And so, with that said, uh, let us go uh, before God and worship. We're gonna start with an opening prayer. And so just bow your heads with me. And so stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. Now with your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that we eagerly may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and all of God's people say, Amen. We get to open with joy to the world. Should we stand? Let's stand up. To the world.
well. Please be seated. And I am so excited to invite our kiddos. Come and sit up front. Uh, you can sit on the steps. You can sit on our beach. Ooh. And you don't even have to worry about sand. So come on up and we get to hear the story of Jesus's birth. The story of Jesus's birth. Let me sneak around here. Yeah. Take him a 
not our oath. All right. All right. I, I know this is the moment you've all been waiting for, the moment where I get to occupy your time for 10 minutes. And I thought we would do it with the song. Drum roll, please. 12 days of Christmas! Yay! And the crowds rejoiced. Yay! 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 All right, so, fun thing. Did you know that the 12 days of Christmas actually start on Christmas Day and go to Epiphany, which is January 6th? Did you know that? So, here's the other good thing about that. If you don't send a gift until January 1st, you're still early good to know. So if somebody says this gift's late, mm -mm, there are 12 days of Christmas, and that's where this song comes from. And more fun fact, some have um, hypothesized that this was actually a religious song, and so we're going to sing it together, and then I'm going to try to teach religious meanings as we go through the next 10 minutes. Are you excited? Everybody go yay! yay. Hooray! So... Um, who's a good singer? Because I'm not. Oh, we'll just go ahead. Anyway, so, on the first day of... Oh, sorry, what's that Nancy start us? With? The first day of Christmas my true love gave to me A partridge in a pear tree Oh, perfect. Oh. That was great. That was good. That was really good. Y'all are wonderful singers. I appreciate you staying there with me. And so a partridge on a pear tree could be Jesus on the cross, right? Because I don't know if you know this, but partridges will protect their young. In fact, if a predator goes towards the nest of a partridge baby, uh, that mama partridge will feign injury on the ground, flapping her wings. This is me being a bird. You're welcome, right? So will feign injury on the ground so that the predator will attack the mama bird rather than attack the young. Did you know that? And so if you think about what Jesus has done for us, right, so uh, rather than uh, uh, the death and, uh, if you will, the devil going for us, right, the mama bird takes one for the team. So Jesus on the cross. So I'll need a volunteer. I love volunteers because they make this more fun for me. So I was thinking of who would be a really good volunteer, and I thought of our student of the week. Is our student of the week for Lewiston Altura Schools here this morning? Hmm. Woo! So, there are several props up here. Some of them are hidden in here and some are there. And as we sing, and it's going to get harder as the more days we do, I want you to lift up the prop. So, uh, uh, first day of Christmas, partridge in a pear tree, Jesus who gave his life for you and me. I want you to find a cross and lift it up. <laughs> oh, and you can spin it around because that's the, that's the ugly. There you go. There you go. Not, whoa, whoa. <sighs> All right. So, should we do the second day? All right, cool. So, second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a mm, turtle doves and a partridge and a pear tree. All right, so put down the cross. And so the, the two turtle doves are the Old and New Testaments. So uh, you want to hold those up? And everybody go, ooh. Everybody go, ah. Right? And you'll see that the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew. Did you know that? And the New Testament uh, was originally written in Greek. And so uh, Dexter here is holding a Hebrew Old Testament and a Greek New Testament. So the two turtle doves are the two halves of our Bible. So, yeah. Should we sing the third? Oh, so you can put those down. Uh, find a spot maybe up there. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three fringes and turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. 
So, Dexter, you're doing great, but if you can hold up the props as we're singing so that we'll get to see the... I, I could help? I know I could. <laughs> Thank you. So our three French hens are faith, hope, and love, right? Those kind of Christ, uh, uh, Christian values. And so I, I made this. Uh, it's a symbol. Some people actually get it as a tattoo. So if you're thinking about getting a tattoo because you've got uh, faith... An anchor has historically been a sign of, uh, of um, um, hope, right? That you're, that you're rooted in something, that you're grounded in something. Storms may come, uh, but you've got that rock that you're hooked to, if you will. So sailors found it that way. And then love. And so this is our faith, hope, and love for the three French hens. So we're going to now go to, oh, oh, maybe I should jump ahead one day. And that way you can hold them up. Or let's sing the third day again. And then you can try to hold each one up as we go. No? <laughs> let's do it anyway. So we're going to do the third day again. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. That was beautiful. That was, that was nice. I, 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 I think he's getting the hang of it. This is the reason you are the student of the week. All right. So on the fourth day of Christmas, uh, we were given the, 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 the four uh, calling birds, but uh, the four gospels. So if you open your New Testament, you can find Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the four stories that tell of Jesus. And so on the fourth day of Christmas, uh, four calling birds, yes, but the four gospels. And I've conveniently bookmarked it for you so you can show everyone. So shall we sing the four days? On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Oh, that was beautiful. Okay. So, uh, five days of Christmas, fifth day of Christmas, uh, is uh, five golden rings, right? Um, but there's also the first five books of the Bible, uh, originally thought to be written by Moses. Um, are, they're also called the Pentateuch. Everyone want to say Pentateuch? We'll try that again. Pentateuch? Nice, right? And so the first five books of the Bible are called the Pentateuch. I also uh, earmarked those for you, and that way you get to have one prop for two verses. I know, I'm so kind, right? Those are them, yeah, right there. And so let's sing the fifth day of Christmas. Are you ready? Fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five golden rings for calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so the six days, does anybody want to guess what this, the, sorry, oh, I gave it away. Mm. The sixth day of Christmas, uh, it's the six geese Elaine, but does anybody want to guess what six days could be in a, if we're going to make it churchy? Hmm, what happened in six days? Hmm, does anybody remember? I'll give you a clue. The seventh day, God rested. So what happened in six days? Creation! Yes! A few people said it. Well done. And so I thought about having a pile of dust and dirt for you to throw. And then I thought, that's probably a bad idea, right? And so there are a few poinsettias out here, Dexter. Do not throw them. They're still for Christmas decoration, but that gets to be your day six prop. So if you want to go find a poinsettia to lift up. <laughs> uh, Dexter, still be my friend after this, okay? <laughs> Maybe. All right, fair enough. So six days of Christmas. Uh, Nancy? On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me six geese a lane, five golden Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. All right, all right. So seven 
are the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How do I have nine? <laughs> no, these are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Somebody get that guy out of here. Where are my seven gifts? Oh, I remember what I was going to do. Ah, uh, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, Dexter has done a wonderful job. Am I right? Yes. yes. And so this is the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I want Dexter to hand this box to somebody. And then as we're singing down, I want you to keep passing the box. And then whoever has the box at the end gets to take Dexter's spot. How much fun is that? <laughs> I know! So we're going to start with the seven swans of swimming for the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And just know that you really want this box at the end. Am I right? I can just watch the anxiety go up in here, by the way. You're welcome. So on the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. <laughs> Gains of swimming, six geese a lane, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Oh, Elijah! Lucky guy! A round of applause for Dexter. Elijah, come on up! And I know what you're thinking, Elijah. You're thinking, oh, I'm going to be stuck up here for 12, uh, the 12 days of Christmas. That's not true. Uh, we're going to keep passing the box. So when it comes to that seventh day, uh, I want you to hand it to somebody else, and we're just going to keep going around. We kind of picked on this side, so if you want to pick on this side, wherever you want to take the box, though, that's up to you. Uh, now, eight maids of milking is our eighth day. Uh, but it could also be the eight Beatitudes uh, that Jesus uh, teaches us. So let me find that prop real quick. <laughs> oh, here they are. So I printed them out so you could have them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are for the merciful, for they shall have mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. And blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So these are your eight Beatitudes. I put them in the Gospels, and so those are them. So that's your eighth day, and we'll start singing. You ready? The eighth day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Eight maids of milking, swans of swimming, he's a lane, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge and a pear tree. Oh, are you excited? All right, come on up, come on up. Thank you, Elijah. Well done. Some snaps and claps for Elijah. Are we good? Okay. So we're going to start from the top. You get to do all 12 days. I'm going to give you a brief overview. Uh, the 12th day of Christmas, uh, my uh, true love said to me, 12 drummers drumming. So the Apostles' Creed, which I wanted really to play with because these are all 12 points, all written out. So it's going to make you hold up each one as fast as possible. Sorry. I know. You're sad. So the 12 points of the Apostles' Creed... Uh, the 11 uh, pipers piping are the faithful disciples. So when we get there, everybody stands up because you're all faithful disciples, right? So 11 faithful disciples, everybody up. We're going to practice. Everybody down. Everybody up. Everybody down. It's like Lutheran Olympics. You're welcome. Uh, the 10 commandments are the 10th day. Uh, and those are... What did I do with them? Somewhere. That's okay, because I don't have to waste any more time. Uh, the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. There's your sign. And then everything else we know. And so let's start from the top. 
and we'll sing it. You, you got them also. Twelve uh, faithful disciples. Good. Uh, Ten Commandments uh, here. Oh, that's right. I, am, I bookmarked them in here. So this is the Ten Commandments. Ah, the Ten Commandments. You're welcome. That's that prop. And then nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, eight Beatitudes, seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we'll just do it. You ready? <laughs> On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me twelve drummers drumming. <laughs> Golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Woo! Round of applause! That was beautiful. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all allowing me to, to kind of sing this song with you. Our, our kids are ready. I'm getting the wave from the back, multiple waves, in fact. And so let me turn this on over. I do believe that Austin and Zane are taking the front. Uh, I don't know how y'all are going to come in, but I am ready for whenever y'all want to come on in. And so I'll turn this over to them as we get to hear the story of Christmas on the beach. And also, can I give a round of applause? Oh, I get a round of applause for Nancy. Thank you for rolling with my craziness. I definitely appreciate it. Come on up, y'all. Are you ready? All right, scooch on in. Come on in, come on in. Let me get out of your way. Are y'all coming from here or there or both? All right, so there you go. Well, here we are, the beach, my favorite place. The beach in July and perfect weather. Just feel that good old heat. Yeah, me exclusive in Minnesota anytime. Absolutely. You know, Ed, I've been thinking. Oh no, not a good one. <laughs> I've been thinking, my favorite place is the beach and my favorite time of the year it's Christmas. Oh no. <laughs> and Christmas is the perfect time to tell the Christmas story. Oh no. No you don't. Every year at Christmas, you make me narrate the Christmas play with you. And now you want me to do a Christmas play in July. What better time? On a beach. <laughs> oh. It'll be fine. They probably all heard the Christmas story before. They practically know all their lines already. This is gonna be a disaster. A non-Christmas, Christmas disaster. Please God, forgive me for whatever happens next. Amen. Okay, let's get started. A long time ago, in a city called Nazareth, there lived a young maiden named Mary. Mary was promised in a marriage to a man named Joseph. Joseph was a carpenter and a very good guy. One day, an angel of the Lord named Gabriel came to visit Mary. Hey Mary, you're gonna have a baby. <coughs> He's gonna be So, Mary was going to have a baby, but there was just one problem. Joseph? That was the problem. Joseph didn't understand how Mary could be having a baby when he knew it wasn't his. But while Joseph was thinking of these things, the angel Gabriel came and visited him in a dream. As 
So, Joseph did just what the angel said. He took Mary into his home as his wife. Not long after that, a decree was given by the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Where is he? Who? Caesar Augustus. Oh, he's on a different page. <laughs> so, Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem, the city of David, to be counted because he was of the house and the line of David. And Mary, his espoused wife, went with him. Wait a minute. Isn't that an awfully long way for a pregnant woman to travel? It was. Almost 70 miles. 70 miles? That doesn't look that far. When they arrived in Bethlehem, there were already lots of people there. Look, tourists. <laughs> they were there to be counted, just like Joseph and Mary. But they'd gotten there first and taken up all the hotel spaces. Kind of like here. Mary and Joseph finally took shelter in a stable because there is no room for them in the inn. What kind of inn? Holiday inn? Days inn? <laughs> Mary's time was near. <clears throat> and, that, and, and that night in the stable, the Christ child was born. Mary wrapped her baby in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. It looks more like a picnic basket covered in a beach towel. Out on the hills near Bethlehem, some shepherds were watching over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were so afraid, the angel said unto them, And suddenly there was, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, highest and, and on, on earth, earth peace, peace and good will, will toward men. men. And when the angel had left them, the shepherds said to each other, And so they did. Who knew shepherds could move that fast? <laughs> and the shepherds returned, praising God and telling everyone what they had seen and heard. Soon afterwards, three kings bearing gifts came to visit the Christ child. They came asking the question, where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And they followed the star to the place where the young child was. They brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They worshiped the young child Jesus, and being warned in a dream, they returned home to their, their own country by a different way. And so ends the Christmas story. As true here on the beach, as it was the first time in Bethlehem, as certain in July as it ever is in December, and as sure now as it will be forever. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Stop drinks for everybody. See in my shape anyway. Hey, you, get off my chair. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, please, please, yes, please. Yes, ma'am. Get off As you were. Good? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> you and me both.
both. All right, another round of applause. Thank y'all so very much. Woo! For our angels and our animals and our shepherds and our kings on surfboards. For Gabriel and for Austin and Zane. Uh, here's a little quick commercial. Austin is helping me preach. Actually, let's fix that. I'm helping Austin preach Christmas Eve. So, uh, Austin, if you want to wave, it's just because not everybody knows. Austin's going to be our preacher for Christmas Eve. If you want to wave at him right now, he's back there. Woo! And so, uh, I'm excited for that. And just, uh, that was kind of fun. <laughs> so, <sighs> So uh, thanks for all our kids, and let me kind of find where I'm at. Where are my notes? My notes are in my pew, and my pew is over here. All right, all right. So let's sing together. Our hymn is Away in the Manger, and uh, please rise and let's, let's sing. Please be seated. And, you know, that is my uh, prayer, you know, for, for all of God's children. And that is true for our little ones who just got to act out uh, our Christmas program. But aren't we all children of God, right, uh, that we get to be held in the arms of God, that whatever comes our way, we get to lift up to God. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. I want to read the story from Matthew as well, uh, and so I hope that's okay. Um, and so this is how it is written in Scripture, that the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." And all of this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So when Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relationship with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. Amen. 
And so like I was saying just a second ago, whatever is going on in our lives, our hopes, our dreams, whatever we've got going on, uh, we get to put them in God's hands, that God has got us. And so we're going to enter into a time of prayer. And so if you've got something on your heart this morning that you want to lift up, just know that we make this space and this time uh, for you. Sound good? Can I get a yeah? Thanks. And so I'll start us off, and then as you feel called, just jump on in. God, we thank you for Jesus, for our Savior, that you are with us. Through our hurts, our doubts, our struggles, our hopes, and our dreams, that you have got us. Keep walking by our side, Lord. God, in your mercy, others. Hear our prayer. For folks traveling over the next week or two, for safety and just joyous reunions, God in your mercy. Others. God, in your mercy. For folks who are struggling with addiction or depression, uh, those who are fighting anxiety or all the things that attempt to try to claim us, God, remind us that we are yours and yours alone. Sometimes the holidays can be a hard time. Sometimes it can be filled with grief and just memories of loss. And so, Lord, just give all of us a, a, a peace of heart and a, and a renewed spirit to be with us through this time. God, in your mercy. Any other prayers? I don't want to cut us short. Lord, in your mercy. And so, God, we lift up all of these prayers in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, the center of Christmas. Right, Those that are spoken out loud and those that are whispered on our hearts and all of God's people say... Amen. Amen. And so uh, we're going to go into a time of offering, this time of giving back out of the gifts that God has given us. This ministry gets to happen. This impact that we get to make on our community happens through our gifts. It is so cool that God continues to work through this church. Can I get an amen? Amen.
You know, it's, it's a really cool thing. We get to put uh, our gifts of, of finances, I should say, in the offering plate as it goes by. Um, but our offering gets to be bigger than that. It's how we get to live our lives. It's how we treat one another. It's how we just share this story that is Jesus. And that's with our words, but also our actions. And so go and continue to be an offering to God. Can I get an amen? Amen. I'll let y'all come on forward. Sometimes you find shrapnel on the beach, don't you? Right, and so let's turn now to communion. And so uh, if you can just kind of hold up that gift of bread and wine, that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so gathered into one in this place by the Holy Spirit, let us pray that prayer our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so if you want to pull back that plastic top there and take forth the bread, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And then the foil for the grape juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. And so the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. And allow me to give you a blessing. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. And so as we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us towards your promised future, coming to the birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and all of God's people say, Amen. Our final hymn, our sinning hymn, gets to be Go Tell It on the Mountain. Please rise as you are able and let us sing together.
know, usually at this point in worship, I get to invite uh, some of our Sunday schoolers up, and they get to share about the amazing crafts and activities and the things that they're able to do downstairs. This morning, I wanted to invite up the people that make that happen every single Sunday. Right? These are the folks that are down in the basement teaching our children, instilling faith, giving that gift of faith, uh, who made this morning happen with all of its fun and shenanigans and levity and just, right, just the joy that we get to experience this morning. Could I ask you to give them a round of applause? They are wondrous. <laughs> Church, please rise. Okay, sure can. So can the Sunday school kids after worship uh, meet our teachers in the back that have, I think, a gift for you, a gift baggie for you, am I right? And so just Sunday school kiddos, just know that there is a, a, a bag for you, a gift bag for you. Allow me to give you this blessing, church. God, the eternal word who dwells with us in Jesus. And who holds us in grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever, and all God's people say, Amen. And so go in peace to your church. May God continue to live out his story through you. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Hey, thanks for church this Sunday. Go in peace. 